On Rise of the Resistance, the e-ticket attraction at Galaxy's Edge at Disneyland and Disney World, guests are brought aboard a Star Destroyer where the bulk of the ride's action takes place. Of the ride's many visual spectacles, one of them is walking off your transport ship and into a massive Star Destroyer hangar bay, complete with TIE fighters and a squad of stormtroopers waiting for you. The question that one of my patrons, Panad, posed to me is if that's the hangar bay for the Star Destroyer, how big is the rest of the ship in comparison to Walt Disney World and Disneyland? So let's find out. Now, thanks to the in-depth nature of fandoms when it comes to properties like Star Wars, this is a pretty easy question to answer. According to the story of the ride, the Star Destroyer in question is the resurgent class Star Destroyer named the Finalizer. It is the First Order flagship that General Hux commands in the sequel films up until Rise of Skywalker. In the last film, he commands the Steadfast, and the reason for the change is actually due to the events of Rise of the Resistance. The ship is 2,916 meters long and 1,484 meters at its widest point. So if we use the general area that guests enter the hangar bay as an anchor point, the actual rest of the Star Destroyer would take up this much space. At 497 meters tall, the ship would be about as tall as eight and a half Cinderella castles stacked on top of each other. Over in Disneyland, the ship would almost reach the Angel Stadium. As for how crowded the ship would be, it's said to be capable of holding 19,000 officers, 55,000 enlisted crew members, and 8,000 stormtroopers. That means the stormtroopers that greet you in the hangar bay represent about half of a percent of all of the troopers on board. In total, it's hard to compare to Disney since they keep capacity numbers close to the chest, but it's safe to say 82,000 people would be a pretty packed day at the Magic Kingdom. Part of why the ship is so big is because the Star Destroyers from the sequel trilogy are much larger than the older models, which I guess isn't a surprise since that was the approach for a lot of the sequel trilogy. Death Star the size of a planet, Emperor the size of like 20 Emperors, a fleet that's just like a copy paste of like 100 Star Destroyers over and over and over again. For comparison, the Imperial class Star Destroyers from the original trilogy are said to be 1600 meters long which would look something like this. Even smaller are the Venator-class Star Destroyers from the prequel trilogy, which are 1,137 meters in length and only 268 meters tall. That would be about four and a half castles. But for as large as the Resurgent-class destroyers are, they're not the biggest models out there. The Executor-class ship from Return of the Jedi had no official size for a pretty long time. It's a ship from a film from an era where we weren't getting companion books full of measurements for fictional spaceships. So the best people could do was try to eyeball the models used in the movies and guess. However, Lucasfilm eventually took a stance and settled on a ship length of 19 kilometers. That's a Star Destroyer that would span from Disney's Animal Kingdom all the way to Universal Studios Orlando, or from Disneyland all the way to Newport Beach. Then there's the Mega Class Star Dreadnought, or as I like to call it, that big stealth bomber looking one from The Last Jedi. This is actually shorter than the Executor Class, at 13.2 kilometers. However, it obviously still needed to be bigger somehow, so instead it's the widest of the ships. I don't think you'd call it a wingspan since they're not actually wings, but side to side, this thing measures 60.5 kilometers. That ship, starting at Hollywood Studios, would go past Orlando and just past Sanford. Over at Disneyland, that ship would cover the span of Los Angeles and end in Bel Air. The First Order is definitely compensating. In any case, the next time you're at Hollywood Studios or Disneyland and you happen to be lucky enough to grab a boarding group for Rise, and you happen to be lucky enough to go on a day the ride is fully working, and you take those steps into that massive hangar bay, just imagine it being part of something much, much larger.
Like, they 